Howdy, 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 my name's Anashi Sasuke, welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. In the last episode, uh, Aridin killed some people, Gamzee's on the loose, uh, shit's going crazy. And now it's time for a tri oh yeah, and Vriska killed Tavros, but that happened a little bit ago. Terezi, examine Tavros. Oh my, what have we here? Upsetting discovery. The upset of the upsetting discovery quickly turns to dismay and grief. Ah, there's a tiny honk in the corner of the screen. You succumb to emotion. Tears are in order, probably. You attempt to sniffle. A wobble of the lip, even. Alas, the tears will not come. Stupid, lousy, doomed Dave and your stupid, lousy complicity in his death getting you all cried out like that. Oh well, whatever. There are more important things at hand to concern yourself with than the flow of teal ocular discharge. A crime has been committed. And where crime strikes, there is justice to be done. Investigate. The scene is a gruesome spectacle to your nose, otherwise... Known as a Gnostical. Under, the cir under other circumstances, the aroma could be delightful. A rich chocolatey bouquet sent from the heavens. But at the scene of this fresh murder, the smell is highly unpalatable. Palatable. Stomach turning, even. It smells like all the worst things you could expect it to, and more. But a true legis lacerator must be steeled to the revolting. Only the truth matters. And if there's one thing that matters even more than the truth, which there is, it's justice. Someone is going to pay. Consider suspects. Before the full investigation is underway, a legis lacerator will always have a chief suspect in mind. The one she will hold guilty until proven otherwise. A process customarily taking place after the execution. Even so, it is only prudent to... Uh, stay open to the possibility of other culprits. As they say in your line of work, there's always room on the gallows for more to swing. And though ex executing is the wrong person... Executing the wrong person is only a minor embarrassment to the court block, it is an embarrassment, embarrassment nonetheless. His tyranny will surely commend you for your commend you for your due diligence by graciously neglecting to eat eat you after the trial. Sniff around for clues. Above you, you detect faint traces of what you reckon to be a special stardust, such as the kind left behind by the flapping wings of a mischievous fairy. Suspicious indeed. And not far from that, you detect bright trails of white light. It smells hopeful, also curious. And that noise behind you is a honk. Expect noise. Oh, of course, it is Gamzee up to his unmistakable charades. He is wandering around somewhere out there in the abyss. He probably has no idea what sort of danger he is in with one or more murderers on the loose. Poor guy. You'll have to seek him out shortly and offer him protection. You'd feel terrible if you were to lose any more friends. Deploy forensics crew. But first, you must complete your investigation. Professor Pusefoot, Inspector Barry Breath, and Dr. Honeytongue of reporting. Your, fav your team of forensic scientists is the best there is. There is no bit of evidence which will escape their eager and busy snouts. Draw outline. Professor Pusewood immediately begins drawing a pointless chalk outline around the body as a standard protocol. Which is to say, you hold a piece of chalk up to a snout and draw it yourself. Yuck, the chalk is getting blood on it, you'll have to discard that color. And then there's this thing here that we can't do yet. And then the next page, dust for prints. Dab dab dab. You grind up a piece of chalk and dab uh, Inspector Barry Breath's ample plush rump into the powder. You dust the victim's robotic apparatus, revealing nothing. Quite the slippery one you're dealing with. There are no prints on the victim's face either. This was surely the work of a master criminal. The murder weapon, however, reveals a plethora of prints. Your keen tongue tells you that most of these belong to the victim, but several are unidentified. Hmm. You're only pretending to think there is any chance they are not Friska's, because otherwise it would be no fun. The inspector's bottom has become dreadfully bloody, though. You believe you will dismiss the inspector. There he go. Get medical report. What's that, Dr. Honeytongue? Your analysis is inconclusive. You are recommending a full autopsy of the corpse, you say? No, Honeytongue, are you quite mad? The corpse must not be dismembered yet. There could still be hope for the victim's resurrection. And according to the Legend of Lacerator's handbook, the victim's well-being is of the, among the highest of investigative priorities. The odds that his dream self survived are quite slim, you admit. But you must at least try for the sake of your friend, even if it means braving the awful stench. Prepare to revive. This is not going to be pretty. But what are friends for, if they can't smooch each other's butchered corpses when the need arises? You will just have to suck it up. You can do it, Terezi. RIP. I don't think he's coming back. 
I don't think he, he he's not coming back. Carcat and Terezi revive. Two times corpse corpse smooch combo. Alas, they cannot be revived. Their dream selves have been slain. Rufio, make him pay. Oh no, Rufio has just been murdered through the chest by his cruel nemesis, Captain Hook. His newfound father figure and man Skylark watches in horror. What? I'm gonna ask Steffi to marry me. I really like your blessing. Looky, looky, I got hooky. <gasps> oh, shit. No! Do you know what I wish? I wish I had a dad. Like you. Oh, Dan, I'm sorry. I've never seen Hook, and I did not know that happens. Like, I, I've legit never seen Hook, and I did not know that happens. No! Speak to me, Rufio! Oh god, what has he done? Rufio, please tell me that's just Mo Mohawk die! Please just be Mohawk die! <laughs> okay, make believe time is over. I wish I had a dad like you. me too, Rufio. And how I wish you could have been my son. You were so much better to me than that treacherous piece of shit cow who betrayed me to join Hook. You taught me so much, Rufio. You taught me to crow. You taught me to fight. You taught me to fly. Please don't teach me to die now. I know no one thought you were real, but I believed in you. I always believed. I won't let you leave me. Revive. This is that s t u p i d why don't we see what john's up to behold puffy oracle you are transfixed by the haunting mystery and beauty of this cloud's message how long have you been staring at it minutes hours you've begun to lose track of time what could it be two squirming cephalopods of luck and a mating ritual you suppose you will never know Snap out of it! You somehow managed to pry your eyes from the exquisite celestial projection. You have been exploring the battlefield with a new ally, a friendly fellow who strikes you as a sort of wizardly vassal. Your travels had led you here. You spy a wallet lying on the ground. Takes the wallet. You pick up the wallet. It's full of many things, but the first thing to catch your eye is a note. Son, if you're reading this, it means you have inherited my wallet. You have truly become an adult man. Wield it with responsibility and integrity. I am so, so proud of you. Become overwhelmed with the responsibility. You are suddenly extremely overwhelmed. How can one boy handle such awesome power and responsibility? You also wonder why your dad dropped his wallet. It's as if he knew you would find it here. Perhaps he has been cloud gazing too? Anyway, you wonder what else he's got in here. Check the contents of the wallet. The first card you examine contains one ton of shaving cream. Your father is nothing if not prepared. Inspect Windy Boy's treasure. Oh goodness, such a lovely cargo the boy has produced from his small brown square. The black and white patterns on these little carapace cylinders are impossibly attractive. What? You should be careful with that. Do you have any idea, idea how flammable shaving cream is? And vibe like the wind. Oh god. You gulp down decadent, foamy dollops of the beard buster and quickly respond with the blah callback as depicted jostling in the lower right hand corner of the image. Because it is not nearly as tasty as you'd hoped. But you keep eating it anyway. Empty the wallet. You don't have all day to be pawing through this while your silly friend eats shaving cream. You've already wasted hours staring at mysterious things happening in clouds. Time to take a rapid inventory. Is that a car? Look at all this fatherly loot. An inviting pile of pipes, a somewhat less than inviting pile of razor blades, a spare car, an assortment of shoes, hats, ties, several issues of the serious gesture, ticket stubs to Cirque du Soleil, 
You would prefer to forget that what happened that day. He was just so embarrassing. A briefcase full of fatherly documents, a variety of photographs, a laptop computer, ten tons of pipe tobacco, and a lighter. Examine photographs. The wallet unsurprisingly contained a series of sentimental photographs of you when you were young. Some of these photos appear to have jokes written on the back, others cake recipes. He also kept a series of portraits of some of his favorite comedians. Some are understandable. Harry Anderson goes without saying. Bill Cosby? Living fatherly legend. But his interest in Mr. Foxworthy always struck you as a little lame. Those redneck jokes were so corny and stupid. You secretly suspect that your father was mostly arrested by the man's mustache. Maybe he fantasized about shaving the Agrarius furry lip. That seems like a reasonable theory to you. Examine Laptop. Hooray, a computer! You've been dying for a way to talk to your friends again. He bought this laptop at the father excuse me, at the Dadley Depot. An incredibly boring store established to furnish dignified gentlemen everywhere with dull fatherly goods. It's always so boring when he dragged you there. You have no idea who this douchebag is. Who's this douchebag is what you ask every time you see a smug face. Maybe you're being unfair to the man, though. Some guy named Crosby, you guess? Who cares? He's so boring. It, it's Bing Crosby. John, clean up this mess. You recapture all of the stuff and put it away neatly in your dad's sweet wallet. You're almost done. Just one more thing to... Beep! Oh, for the love of... Get in. Roll the eyes. Fine. Guess you're going for a little ride. Buckle up. Safety is the most important thing. WV, follow suit. You presume the Windy Boy knows what he's doing. You tug the dark sash across your chest and secure it. This is an incredible look for you. It's too bad the fashion accessory seems to trap you inside this vehicle. Human fashion and transportation safety sure are weird and apparently interrelated. Ride. Your feet do not reach the little steppy levers. The, your co-pilot points out that you also do not have the key. You are terribly disappointed. Do the windy thing already. He probably would have been a terrible driver anyway. John and WV, ascend. We have... Liftoff! Let's go check this out. Oh god, it's the Gamzee Eye! That's not the right thing. Cocktenued. And there he goes! We have Liftoff into the sky! Doof, are you scoping this bitch's choice ass? Pester Jade. Hey Jade, are you there? I have a computer now! This boring guy keeps blinking at me though, it's weird. Is it blinking? Is it gonna is it gonna blink? Okay, I don't think it's gonna blink. John! Wow, finally! Hi, sorry I disappeared after you entered the game, but from what I've seen in the clouds, it doesn't look like you have had much trouble making progress. Yeah. Nope! Dave was able to set set up as my server player. He's building up my house right now so that we can deploy some equipment up there. Oh, nice! Dave is serving all the ladies, isn't he? Yep! He's like a dude on Butler Island. I mean, a dude who happens to be one of the butlers, doing a lot of serving to various ladies who are vacationing at this snooty resort. Wait, I'm fucking this up. No, that, that's okay, I won't tell him about it. Okay, good. All I'm saying is, why can't I have a day butler too? Well, maybe you can. I'll try to put in a good word for you. Thank you. What's the equipment you're deploying? I'm not sure. Something to do with cloning, I guess? It serves as some purpose in my quest as a witch of space. A nice troll named Kanaya has been advising me on stuff about that. Have you talked to her? Hmm. I don't think so. Not recently, anyway. You should. A bunch of trolls are not nearly as bad as I thought. Even Carcat. He's been helping me out, too. Sort of. <laughs> he has? But I thought he hated you. Oh, yeah, he said plenty of stuff like that, but I don't think he ever actually meant it. Flying off the handle is part of his charm in a funny way, once you know that about him. Yes, this is pretty much what I've concluded about him as well. He's a pretty great guy. I really look forward to more of this outburst, especially his first conversation with me, which I'm to understand will be legendary. But we shouldn't have the. T but we shouldn't tell him we said any of this or he'll be furious. <laughs> Shh. So what else have you been up to? We should try to catch up as much as possible. Yeah! Hmm, what else? There's been so much going on. It's been a little hard to keep track of it all. Why don't you tell me what you've been up to first? Ah, oh, man. You'll never guess what I'm doing right now. Go ahead, try to guess. You will not succeed. Whoa! 
John, where did you get that nice flying car? Oh, god damn it. How do you know? Do you have Rose's crystal ball? Sort of. She gave me the code and I made a cool pair of goggles with it. Uh, I'm surrounded by real life witches. Everyone I know is turning magic. It's ridiculous. Including me. I'm magic now. It certainly seems so. What's with your fancy magic car? What with your fancy magic car and your chauffeur familiar that I guess? No, he's neither a chauffeur nor a familiar. He's just a new friend. Also, this is not a magic car. It is an ordinary car. I found it in my dad's wallet. You did? Yes, I just found his wallet on the ground, but my dad was nowhere to be found. The clouds led me to his wallet, though, so maybe they'll lead keep leading me to him? Hmm. Maybe, but hang on, let me try something. Okay. I have seen lots of interesting things in the clouds. I guess you used to see interesting things like that all the time, right? Yes! What have you seen? Well, uh... Well, lots of things that were mysterious and didn't make much sense, but also lots of things I recognize. Like stuff I've done before, and also stuff I will do in the future. And things that Rose and Dave have been up to. And you too! Like what? What did you see? Well, I saw your island, and saw you sleeping in a floating bed, and... I saw your pretty snow planet, and I saw you with some frogs. Have you found any frogs yet? Frogs? No. Well, I saw you once in a neat outfit. It was kind of like you were torn from the pages of of my favorite Japanese mangas. And the snow was melting and you were surrounded by frogs for some reason. <laughs> now it sounds like I'm describing a weird dream I had about you. Sure does. Which I guess is sort of true? Anyway, I guess that must not have happened yet. Nope, but that sure sounds pretty interesting. I wonder why I would be surrounded by frogs. Dunno, but you are a witch, remember? Witches love frogs. <laughs> that's true. I hope I'm not planning on putting them in a cauldron or anything. Doubt it, it looked, like a, uh, looked to me like a friendly gathering. Whew. Oh, and one time I saw a green version of you with pointy ears and you were crying. Did that happen yet? Blah, yes. I prototyped my dead dream self and tried to get her to fight Jack, but it turned out to be a big mistake. God, I can't believe how dumb that idea was. She was an emotional wreck. Oh no, what happened? Where is she now? Oh, she went off to cry somewhere else. Good riddance. Wow, Jane, you really have been up to a lot. <laughs> I guess so. And I've just been staring at these dumb clouds for hours or whatever. I even saw my own dead body in a cloud. What? Oh no! It's okay though, it already happened. I was sort of tricked into sleeping on my quest bed, and when I went to sleep, Jack killed me. She must have known that would happen. Who? Riska. Do you know her? I don't think so. She's pretty cool, but just between you and me, she might be a little crazy. Well, if she tricked you into getting killed, then I would have to agree. But I don't think it's really like that. Honestly, I think dying was a necessary part of the process, and she just didn't tell me so I wouldn't get scared. What process? And how are you a liar now if you died? John, I'm a little confused. Well, I died on my quest bed and woke up here as my dream self, and now I have all these sweet wind powers, which is how I'm making this car fly. Oh, that makes sense. Dave mentioned you had reached the gods here. Yeah, but he did not say what it involved. He probably didn't want to make me worried. Or maybe he was just being some sort of aloof cool kid. Or that! But he also said that no one else would be able to do it but you? Actually, now it makes sense that I wouldn't be able to since my dream self is dead. It's too bad, really. Yeah, I wonder what space powers would be like. Hmm. I have no idea. Oh well. Maybe you shouldn't rule it out, though. I mean, you did mention your dream self isn't completely dead, remember? <gasps> You're right! I suddenly don't know if I want to become God tier anymore. Eh, <laughs> she was that bad, huh? <clears throat> I don't even want to talk about her. She is sad and cowardly. Okay, I will not pry. Why don't you tell me about your new friend? He sure seems to be enjoying that horn. Beep! I know, right? Roll's eyes. He's just a silly guy I met when I woke up here. He seems to be curious about me and followed me around for a while. Also, I noticed he's wearing my bedsheet. Haha! <laughs> what is he doing with that? I don't know. There seems to be his whole cult of people... A cult full of people who worship my ghost sheets. I ran into them a bunch in the Salamander Village. They're all completely ridiculous. So I guess he's a member of the cult? Probably. You're just going to have to deal with the fact that you are becoming a famous hero, John, and people everywhere will idolize you. Derp. They're idolizing me. It's my dumb bed sheets they love. It's so stupid. Oh, also another thing about him. He has the Queen's Ring. <gasps> That's great. John, you will have to get that ring from him. I've tried. I asked him politely for it and everything, but he's very protective of it. Hmm. That's a problem. Actually, I think it's okay. I think he's supposed to keep it. You do? Yes, I once saw something in the clouds. It was pretty hard to tell what was going on, but I saw him. I'm pretty sure it was the future, and he had the ring, and... And what? And then the clouds stopped showing me, but I'm pretty sure that someday, he will have to wear it. <gasps> so 
so I think I will let him keep it. For some reason, I trust him. Okay, John, I trust you, so I will trust in your trust in him. Yeah, trust all around. I'm gonna be support a supportive piece of shit all day and fall down with- and fall down all this trust. How trustworthy do you even have to be to confide in someone like that? LOL. Anyway, I guess I should just, that's enough of that nonsense. I should keep looking for my dad. Maybe if I fly around in this car with this guy beeping here, the noise will get his attention and he will find me. John, I already found your dad! You did? Yes, I found him with my goggles almost right away, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh! Well, that sure is convenient. Where is he? He's with Rose's mom. They're in a castle having some sort of tea party together. They appear to be enjoying each other's company. It's quite adorable, actually. Oh, wow. Jade, what if they get married or something? Oh, God, if Rose became my sister, too, that would wreak havoc on Carcat's shipping diagram. As leader of this team, I submit that we cannot afford to let this happen. Everyone man your battle stations! Red alert! We have a sink to ship! Armed torpedoes! Amuga! Kapachu! Target destroyed! <laughs> I'm just joking around, of course. Durr, oh really, John? Meh. But really, they make a nice couple, and I think it would be great if they got married. Yes, I agree. Even if it would make it awkward for me to marry Rose. I guess so. But maybe that doesn't matter. They are kind of a special circumstances. Ow. I hit my hand on my keyboard. Yes, they are pretty special. I wonder if my dad and her mom would mind us getting married. I don't know. Who are they to stand between two youngsters in love? Whoa, in love? Yes, John, two people must be in love in order to get married. And it's one of the rules. Oh, jeez, I guess you're right. Well, so what do you say, John? Are you in love with Rose? Uh. And if not, are you prepared to fall in love with her? Uh. Well? Ah! This line of questioning is making me flustered. All I know is I was ordered by Carcat to marry Rose. I think we can both agree that it will be reckless to look at a crappy shipping diagram made by an alien and ignore its message altogether. I didn't even know Carcat made a shipping diagram. It's a thing of beauty and it will save the human race. I will have to make him show me. Yes. By the way, you will marry Dave. 100% true reality. Uh, it's okay though. I will not press you on your feelings for him. I already know that you're totally into the Strider anyway. What? It's all in the diagram, Jade. It's all in the diagram. I don't know about that. I clearly need to take a good hard look at this prophetic document and possibly tell Carcat what an idiot he is. That you do? Okay, but anyway, who cares about his terrible shitty drawings and meddlesome romantic schemes? How do I find my dad? Uh, well, I don't actually know where he is related relative to you, so I don't know if I can give you directions. Blah. There might be some way to do that. These goggles are actually really complicated. I will look into it and get back to you. In the meantime, why don't you fly around and keep looking? At least now you know to look for a castle, and maybe the clouds will give you some more tips. Yes, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Thanks for your help, Jade. Sure. Heart. I'll talk to you later. Later. Ectobiologist sees pestering Garten Austin. Carcat, contact John. It's gonna be so oh, there goes the blinking. Carcinogeneticists began showing ectobiologists. John! Carcat, what's up? I'm not sure why I'm telling you this. I guess it's just out of a sense of obligation at this point. We've come this far, so I feel like you should know. You know what? I might not make it out of this alive. This might even be the last time you hear from me. Wait, what the fuck am I saying? The last time you hear from me will be the first time you hear from me. Uh. I mean, this could be the last time from my perspective, because from my perspective, I could be dead soon. Oh no! Are you in some sort of trouble? Is it Jack? Carcat, what's going on? Oh god, the honking! Why won't the honking stop? I have to go! Sorry for being such a douche to you and your friends! I hope you can succeed as a later why I failed miserably. Carcinogeneticists cease trolling ectobiologists. That's, this message was rather disconcerting. You urge your navigator to ease up on the honking for a while since this is distracting, and it's somewhat bad taste given the circumstances. You think you should try to message your friend back. Pestage, uh, pester Carcat. Carcat! Hey buddy, you had me worried there, are you okay? What in the name of sweet globe-tickling fuck? Egbert, I just got done erupting a whole volcano of merciless fuck when on the primitive village located squarely on your crotch, assuming that's a suitably terrible part of a human anatomy for a village in jeopardy to exist. Uh Shut up! How dare you contact me while I'm in the middle of my backwards march of hate through your tedious timeline. Oh god, this is not right. You aren't supposed to hate me anymore, you're supposed to be kind of my friend, sort of. What is this? What do you mean, when is this? Okay, let me just check the universal clock which keeps consistent time for all frames of reference in all planes of reality. It's half past, you're a moron! Okay, duh, I know that. I mean, how many times have you talked to me before? We just got done with our second conversation, how can you not know this? Ah, this isn't good, I need to talk to future you! 
Why? Because it sounds like you're in trouble. I think maybe you're running from Jack. Of course we're running from Jack. I just got done fucking telling you that. No, I know, but... Ugh. I guess my future conversations will instigate some misguided need for you to get in touch with me later on. What have I gotten myself into here? I swear, it never ends with the ultimate riddle shit, even after the game is over. Even after you lose it. How unfair is that? Ultimate riddle shit? I can tell this conversation is going to be an utter fucking joy to participate in. I honestly envy anyone in the position of not having to put up with reading it. Well, you asked for it, John, so here we go. Are you ready? No, I just want to talk to future you. No, you don't. Take it from me. The guy is a bastard. Future Carcat, retreat into lab. Drag. There's a honk. There's a honk. Happened two times combo. You've been so busy being consumed by unspeakable horror you didn't notice someone has been trying to contact you. Answer to Resi. Gallo's calibrator began showing carcinogeneticis. Cargo, I have a grave and serious news to report. I have discovered the scene of a real-life murder. Tavros was the victim. I'm very upset, but I'm trying to stay professional about it. This crime is going not going to solve itself. I've conducted a, my preliminary forensic analysis of the scene, but my findings have been mostly inconclusive. I'm... Let's see. I'm only pretending to think there's any chance it was not Friska, because otherwise it would be no fun. Anyway, I just wanted to warn you there's a bloodthirsty murderer on the loose, and you should be careful out there. Now, I just... I must attempt to revive the victim. Ugh. Parcot, you cannot even imagine what this smells like, but I pride myself on being a true professional as well as an excellent friend. I will be away from my glasses for just a moment, so if you get this message, please be patient. Teresa, are you there? Oh fuck, Tavros is dead too! Teresa, listen to me! You have to get out of there! Vriska is the least of our problems! Wait, forensic analysis? Are you fucking insane? Put your glasses back on, goddammit! Gallo's calibrator began showing carcinogeneticis. Honk. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck! Blocked Gallo's calibrator. Examine Solix. You wish he would wake up. You could really use some awesome powers right now. Big awake and not useless. Oh god, are those his teeth on the floor? There! Good as new, best friend! It's like it never happened! No one can ever blame me for dropping him down the stairs now! Stairs? What stairs? Ha ha ha! Contact Equius. You were hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you're running out of options. You need backup. Strong backup. Carcinogenesis is beginning showing Centaur's testicle. Equius, are you there? Yes. Okay, good. Are you still really strong? Like, is that still your thing? I'm still exceptionally strong. Strength continues to be my strongest attribute. Okay, good. I guess that was a pretty dumb question. I need your help. With what? Gamzee is on a rampage. He's gonna kill us all if we don't stop him. You mean... the high blood? What? Yeah, I guess. Oh, dear. What? Are you saying the high blood has finally embraced his position atop the hierarchy? No, I'm saying he fucking snapped and wants to murder us all. Yes, exactly. Damn it, why does this conversation have to be so particularly terrible? All I'm asking you to do, the order you to do, is go find Gamzee and beat him to death with your bare hands or possibly two halves of a broken bow before he kills anyone else. I certainly appreciate the debauchery inherent in receiving an order of such depravity from a rogue-blooded foul mouth, but I'm not entirely positive I can raise a hand to the high blood. It wouldn't be my place. Oh my god! Why do you have to be so difficult in all the most fucked up ways possible? You're getting off on this, aren't you? Uh... If you ask me for a towel, I'm going to flip my shit right off this fucking meteor. It will just be me, spinning and spinning and spinning into endless nothing, screaming. No, I have a sufficient supply of drying utilities. I forbid you from getting off on any of this. Don't get off on my orders. Don't get off on phrases like fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck. And don't get off on any sort of weird admiration you might be harboring for a murderous clown with purple blood. The blood, it is just so exquisitely purple. Are you listening to me? Yes, but look, the situation is very delicate, I believe. The high blood would benefit from a proper enculturization into the aristoc aristocracy. I don't think he gives a shit about your etiquette lessons or how true a true gentleman is to go about handling a proper fucking horse teat. Seriously, people are in danger here. I'll take measures to ensure our comrades aren't injured. Okay, and? Well, but you won't fight him, is that it? If it comes to a close quarter skirmish, I will try to be prepared. How fucking reassuring! You are such an idiot, I don't get it! You kiss the ground this lunatic walks on because he has purple blood, but that doesn't stop him from ripping you- ripping on Aerid, and I know for a fact you don't like him. And his blood's even purplier, isn't it? Yes, that's different. He is a sea dweller. Our feud is codified in tradition. Nay, we are obligated to be at odds, it's dignified. Okay, fine! 
Then speaking of which, he's on a murderous rampage too. He is? How many of us are rampaging murderously exactly? I don't know, at least three probably, but who even knows at this point? The point is, if you see him, would you mind snapping his stupid wand in half or something and then choke him to death with his own shitty pretentious scarf? Do I really have to? God, what is the problem now? I'd prefer not to interact with him. Why? It's primarily that his advances make me uncomfortable. <laughs> I would high-five you if it wouldn't shatter every bone in my hand, and if it if you didn't smell terrible. But seriously, if you could carry out my orders in the latest, the least perverse way possible, that would be great. Just kill one or more of these assholes and get back to me, okay? I need you to come through for me because we're running out of manpower here. We are? Yes, didn't I mention? Fefri, Kanaya, and Tavros are dead, Solix is unconscious, and Terezi is missing. Oh god, I hope she's okay. I should probably go look for her. Oh shoot, excuse my vulgarity. I'll, I'll let that slide. Just do what I say, okay? I will look into it. Okay, so, I'm, this is a good stopping point for this episode. In the next episode, Terezi's gonna return to the computer lab, because apparently she is still alive. Let me save the game. And... This has been Anashi Sasuke, thank you guys for sticking around for this episode, and I will see you next time. Later!